Hey there everybody, this is Indium here, welcoming you back to another episode of Let's Play Legend of Zelda Oracle of Ages. Right, so in the last episode we made it to the level 5 crown dungeon, in this episode we're going to make a start on it. Right, so let's do this shit. <laughs> uh, I do like the music in here, it's quite cool. Alright, so gotta get rid of all the moblin. I don't, I'm not sure if it's this dungeon that has a cracked wall on one of the sides of these walls. I think it's... I'm not sure if it's Oracle of Seasons that I'm thinking of here. Uh, let me just check, because it's been a while. Um, well, since I did this dungeon, it was about two months ago since I played the, since I beat the game, so it must have been since, like, um, May, probably, since I last did this dungeon. <laughs> and this dungeon's quite a huge dungeon, too. It's a lot bigger than, um, sc a lot bigger than the Skull Dungeon that we just previously did a few episodes ago surprisingly and we're already making the start on level 5 damn we'll be done with this game before you know it holy crap we're, we're like halfway through the game already believe it or not and we're on part 27 here like this LP will be over before my very eyes I mean I didn't expect to get this far within the few episodes that I've recorded because you know I thought this game would have at least taken about 60 parts but no it's looking to be about 50 parts now or maybe even 40 I don't know or well, depends how lucky we get on recording. Right, so... Yeah, there's also a male mosquito. I know this is quite random for me to mention, but there's a male mosquito in my kitchen, and it's been there for days, and it's teasing me. Like, whenever I go to kill it, it always gets away from me. It's, it's like a ninja, dude. It just avoids me every single time I go for it. And then when I do go for it, like a fast punch with, um, a, with a weapon, like... I tried using a, um, a potato masher to try and kill it and it got away and I hit I swear to god I hit that thing and it just avoided me at all, at all costs and I'm being killed here um, by this death whatever dark nut or whatever it's called I don't know what they're called I think they I think they are called dark nuts in this game they're basically like you know the dark nuts in Ocarina of Time I'm not sure if that's true though Alright, so we got ourselves the dungeon map, so I can have a little look here and see which areas I want to go to first. Because this dungeon is kind of huge, and you can do so many things at once. It's like, wow. <laughs> like, there's so many options, so many areas you can go to, like down those stairs there. But you don't want to go down those stairs, I think they take you to a different area. But there's one part in this dungeon, well, a different area we can't do anything in at this point in the game. So... Or at this point in the dungeon, should I say? So you want to hit the hit the switch and make it go blue, so then the red uh, tiles go down. Um, yeah, this is the room. This is the area I want to go to. But yeah, there's a room later on in this dungeon that gives me so much friggin' troubles. It's unbelievable, and I know it's this dungeon because I remember doing it, and it gave me so much troubles. But what you have to do is you have to use the Pegasus seeds and the Rock's feather and jump across disappearing and reapp reappearing platforms. And they disappear, and then they reappear like really fast. You have like o you only have like a few seconds to actually get across the room, and it's in one of those underground segments. Okay, is this the area, or is this the particular area I want to be going to? Nah, I'm not sure. <laughs> uh, right, so we're gonna. Well, we can do this room because we need the switch hook to get that diamond block on that switch over there. So. Hang right, on a second, let me just get my switch hook out here. No, not those Pegasus seeds, we don't need that. <laughs> Alright. Almost beat A Link to the Past now, I'm on Total Rock now. I've got all the heart containers up until the point where you have to get the final heart container in Total Rock. So... I've got, I've not actually got that much left to do on that game, and maybe that might be a future LP if I actually manage to beat it, because I've never beaten that game in my whole life, and it'll be a huge achieve, it'll be a huge achievement if I did beat it, because that game is freaking hard as hell. Like I got to the, I got to Ganon's Tower, and I pretty much gave up halfway through it because it was so dang hard to do. Like there's this one room where you have to use the ether, the ether medallion to light up a pathway. And that's the room I think I just gave up with because it was just too hard. You have to like memorize the path and the ether only lasts for like a second and it consumes magic like crazy. So you can only use so you can only use it a few times before the consumption of your magic just completely disappears and it just consumes your magic, that's all I can really say. Right, so this room you have to use your seed shooter um, in a specific way. 
to um, be able to hit all three switches at once and I think you have to hit it at a certain diagonal angle from a certain point. Yeah, like that. That wasn't too bad, okay. There's one in one of the later dungeons, I think, that took me forever to figure out. <laughs> I think it was... I'm not sure if it was this game either. I think it was Oracle of Seasons. There was like one of those switches and you had to shoot the um, seed shooter that you get in that game um, in a certain way, I think. I can't remember. <laughs> Well, I, I, I'm, at, I'm at the eighth. I'm at the eighth dungeon in Oracle of Seasons, the Sword and Shield dungeon, and I'm stuck in there as well. Like, I, I find that dungeon, the eighth dungeon in that game, a lot harder than the eighth dun dungeon in this game. But it's a lot smaller than the eighth dungeon in this game. The eighth dungeon in this game is friggin' huge compared to the eighth dungeon in Oracle of Seasons. It's surprising, but you'll see. I'm not going to go ahead and spoil what the eighth dungeon in this game is. Well, I haven't really spoiled what the 8th dungeon is in Oracle of Seasons by giving away the name as such. I haven't told you what item you get in there, I haven't told you what the boss is or anything like that. So I'm not going to ex so I'm not going to exploit, you know, huge spoilers <laughs> for you guys to hear. I'm not going to go ahead and do that. All right. So we can't do this room yet because we need the certain item that you get from this dungeon in order to do that puzzle, which I think we're actually coming up we're, we're actually coming up um, to getting, to be getting, yes. <laughs> yeah, we're coming up to it right now. With the dungeon, that, the, the dungeon item. Which is also an item that is reused, or, re yeah, reused from A Link to the Past. It originally was in A Link to the Past, but, you know, this game was way before A Link to the Past. No, way after, way after, dude. Not way before, A Link to the Past was way before this game. Yeah. Right, so what, basically what this is, is like a mem memory test. You gotta like stand on the switch and memorize which way on which, yeah, which way you need to push the blocks to make this certain pattern. So you need to push the, one of these yellow blocks at the top here, like so. I, uh, hang on a second. No, don't go full in the hole. Uh, um, yeah. Right. So you need to move the red. Um, right next to the actual panel, or whatever you want to call it, the floor pattern right next to it there. Then you need to move the blue one up here, and then the yellow one at the diagonal angle. And then I think it's the same with the other side, isn't it? Yeah, but except we need the blue one to be moved, and we need the gold one to be moved down. Oh crap, I've messed it up because you can't move the blue one now, you stupid. You push that right against the wall. <laughs> You're not supposed to do that. Alright, so... No, yeah, just basically do the same what you did last time. Um, move that up, then... Yeah, like that. And then move the red up there. And... Gold. Alright, so you want to basically move the blue down the middle here. And then move the gold down. And then push the blue down like that. Wait, is that it? I swear that's correct. That's what it says, right? Yeah. It is what it says. Oh no, that's right, I haven't pushed the gold one. Oh, you stupid. <laughs> there you go. That's what I was missing. You got the cane of Samaria. Use it to create blocks. And it's the same weapon that was in A Link to the Past, and it serves the same purpose. You make blocks appear by using it, and it helps you solve puzzles like this one right here. And I think you get a key from doing this, I'm not sh well, I I'm pretty sure you get a key from it, or either the compass, I can't remember. No, you don't get the compass from doing this, you must get a key from it. So, we'll use the King of Samaria here, and... Yeah, get us another key. Wow, we're making progress in this dungeon already. <laughs> Sweet, we got the dungeon item and everything. Right, well we haven't got the compass and the big key yet, but that'll come later. Okay, got some bloobs here. Right, I don't think we can go this way just yet, because... Well, actually, hang on a second, maybe we can. I don't know. Alright, I don't know where this takes you, but I'm just going to go wherever the wind takes me. Because I know you need a lock... Because I know you need a key here to open this locked door, so we might as well use it. So I can't think of anywhere else you need to use a key on a locked door at this point. 
Okay, so we got ourselves the mini boss here, which is also a mini boss used in Link's Awakening. <laughs> and isn't that a coincidence that this game plays exactly like Link's Awakening? It has the same kind of graphics. So there you go. Oh no, I missed him. Yeah, just chuck all your balls at him. Yeah, that's what she said. No, don't, don't chuck your balls at me. I'm supposed to be chucking my balls at you. There you go, an easy mini boss defeated. <clears throat> and we've also got the teleporter, so we can teleport out of here whenever we want to. I think these ones are actually, yeah. No, wait, they're the same. The red ones shoot arrows and the blue one has the sword, um, I think. Or well, there are different kinds, I don't know. But yeah, they're, I think they're dark nuts. Alright, so you have to use the Kena Samaria here, obviously, to uh, create the bridge. And this is the compass. There we go, we've got ourselves the compass. Now, I want to have a look at the map here and see which chests are which. Oh crap, I can't go down on the map. Because if I do, the emulator is going to freeze. Urgh! Don't you just hate emulation sometimes when it just doesn't want to work or cooperate with you? Ah, uh, right, okay. I'm not sure if it's this underground passageway. I sure hope not, because I really don't want to be coming up against this right now. Because I know I'm going to suck at it. Uh, no, it's not. Uh, I don't think it is, anyway. Because if it was, I think we would have came up against it right now. Because I think you only have to go two sc two screens along, and then you're there. Now this isn't the um, underground passageway that I was thinking of. Right, where are we now, then? I know we're down on the bottom floor somewhere. Obviously. Because we went down a flight of stairs. So... Oh right, okay, this is just another room that leads back to the top again. Maybe this is where it is, I don't know. On the ascent instead of the descent. Alright, so let's have a look here and see where we are. Right, so... And as you can see, the dungeon it does resemble the shape of a crown, and then the bottom floor resembles, resembles the shape of a jewel. Well, that's what I'm going to go with, a jewel and a crown. Because you can't have a jewel without a crown. Or you can't have a crown without a jewel. Should I say? <laughs> yeah, I think that's the correct saying. You can't have a crown without a jewel. Because most crowns have jewels. Well, that's a funny thing to say. Um, a lot of royal jewels have been stolen from, from um, like, you know, from royal places, you know, like Buckingham Palace and places like that. You've had they've had people steal jewels from ro the royal family for years. Like people have broken into palaces and stolen jewels and stuff. And some of them have never been recovered. Like some of them have been stolen and then never been found again. And if people find them, they get ridiculous amount of money for it. It's like crazy. Like I, it would be so cool if someone if. If I found one, but you know, I don't. I don't think I'm ever gonna find something like that in my life. But that's what, like, you know, those detectives are for. Um, yeah, we need a small key. Uh, yeah, there's a block there, and we don't have um, don't have a small key to open it. So we're gonna have to go down here. Alright, I'm gonna have to. But yeah, usually like the best place to find jewels and stuff and like hidden things by um using those detectors is uh to go to the countryside and go out and look in but some places you can't go to like in certain land, so that's why people go at night time so they don't get caught by the landowner. Because if they get caught by the landowner then they can get sued big time buy lots of money because it's on their property and if they go digging on their property that's just gonna look bad right <laughs> so I, s I think there's a chest in is there a chest in here let me have a sl no there isn't okay fair enough I cleared my doubts and I think this is it guys where we're gonna be using the Pegasus seeds and the rocks feather to get across and I fell stupidly 
What the heck was that, dude? You didn't even jump. Yeah, that's right. Oh, I remember this room. Oh no, oh no. It's best to use the Kena Samari in here. I wouldn't even bother using that. So, by this time, just make sure you have the Kena Samaria before you come into this room. Because I'm telling you, it'll make this a whole heck of a lot more easier to do. Instead of using the switch hook to navigate around in. Because this is what one of the main purposes of the Kena Samaria is used for. Is to find out like diff like the pathways in darkened rooms like this. And you'll be finding that you'll be doing this a lot in some caves throughout the game. Um, for one that I can think of is the cave you go into before you go to the 8th dungeon. And uh, the library which we'll be coming to much later on in the game. And I need to get rid of these enemies because they're going to distract me as hell. And I don't want to get distracted <laughs> by trying to kill enemies when I'm trying to get through this room without dying here. Like some of these pathways are just so hard to figure out like where where it's going to stop and stuff. and. You don't know which way to go next. You could either go left or right. And then you end up going right and you end up messing up or something like that. So there we go. We've got a small key. So we can get the heck out of here now by falling down into the pit of doom. The pit of nothingness. The pit, the pit of darkness. Where your soul will be enveloped by the darkness and eaten alive by all the demonic creatures that dwell. Alright, so let's get the heck out of here and... uh go to the room, well, where the key block was, because that's all that's left to do. And I'll have to end off the video here pretty qu pretty shortly, I think. Right, so now I think we have to go through the same process again, like the same rooms and stuff to get back, so I know this is kind of problematic here, um, or kind of, well, not problematic, I wouldn't say problematic, like kind of tedious to just go all the way back, you know, through the same rooms again. Yeah, just skip straight through that room. <laughs> oh, damn it, my Kena Samaria block isn't here anymore. Well, yeah, if you leave the room, it disappears, so they don't stay permanently. I think I should have mentioned that. But any of you play people who are accustomed to A Link to the Past, and yeah, you'll probably already know that. Well, in the in A Link to the Past, I found out the other day, and I found this out by myself, is that you've... That I found the cane of Burn Burnia or something? Burner? Yeah, I found that cane and I never found that before. I found that by myself. I didn't even look online for it. I just found it in exploration. I was like, what the heck? I never found this cane before. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a blue cane that is like used as a defense mechanism. Much like Nehru's love in Ocarina of Time. It kind of works like that, but it consumes magic like no man's business, it's seriously. Like, I, I don't think I'll ever use it, but the only time I can think I see, like, I see myself using it is against the final boss. Because I don't know what the final boss in that game is like, I've never actually come against it. I know, I know what it is, I just don't, I just haven't came against it, I haven't actually attempted any, like, I haven't actually attempted at trying to kill it. Oh damn it! There's still this. Uh, uh, there's another key block, so we're gonna have to go all the way back down again. And I know which room or which area we have to go to to get the next key. So yeah, this is basically like the main room of the dungeon right here. Like this is where most of the activity of the dungeon is held, is in that one room with the four in four-way intersection. Because you have to get keys and all sorts to get through it. And you need to go through that part of the dungeon to get to the boss key, I think. So, <laughs> that's why I say that most of the dungeon is just revolved around that, one, around that one room. And there is a switch around here that you can change the, um, change the colors, I'm pretty sure. And I'm about to die! No, you ain't killing me today! Son. Right, I need some health here. I'm gonna have to go scavenging some fairies or something. Well, I don't think I'm going to get that lucky, but <laughs> at least we got some hearts. I mean, that's good enough for me. Okay, stop shooting me with your lasers. Just calm down with that shit. Huh. 
I think we will be coming up to that room because I think those stairs that are that is uh, surrounded by those blue blocks is uh, where the um, Pegasus boob, the, where the Pegasus seeds and the rocks feather is needed to get across. And I'm gonna die in that room. I know it. And just see it now because I'm only on three hearts here, and it's not good to be on three hearts in that room. <laughs> But we'll give it our best shot and hopefully maybe succeed on the first try. Well, maybe it's not down here. It'll probably be down these stairs right here. I imagine. Swear, I swear it's this dungeon. If it isn't, then I'm going to be like, what the heck? And I'm on two hearts now, so that's even worse. And I'm about... To, well, let's just hope... Oh, damn it, I took damage from that too. Okay, maybe it's not in here either, surprisingly, okay. Fair dues, I'll take your word for it. Alright, so this is kind of obvious, we have to use our seed shooter here to... But I could do with some serious health right now. I didn't get enough health in that room to the entrance of the boss um, to satirize. I didn't get enough hearts in there to help me here. <laughs> wow. I thought those red blocks would have actually stopped that from going over. Alright, let's hope there's some health or a fairy. All I need is a fairy, man. Or a heart, that'll do, I guess. Even though we're on three hearts, that's not good enough. That's not good enough. That's not good enough. Oh, I, yeah, I remember this room too, right? You have to use the Cana Samari in here too, because get this, this is the gimmick of this room. You push one block, it pushes the other. So it's like telepathically communicating with the other block to move in the same direction whenever I push one block, so the other block moves as well. Alright, so we're going to have to use the Cana Samaria here. And, uh, manip well, change so that that block doesn't move in that direction. And, right, so if I move that one up, that's going to move up too. So what you got to do... No, you don't want to do that. You want to put that there like that so then when you move it up that one won't move up right so then right you want to move that one there so then it's on that block now what you got to do is manipulate this one so it doesn't go in the same direction as the other one because if you because if you don't use the cane in the Samaria probably you're just gonna mess it up like that so you have to push yeah like that it's not that really that tricky you know it's very easy puzzle actually so there you go and we got ourselves another small key right so you know what guys I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna end off the video here and continue on the next episode so in the next episode let's play the legends of all color of ages we finish up the crown dungeon because we don't have much of it left to do I don't think we got most of it done in this video so until then this is NDM saying thanks for watching take care buddy see you in the next video and goodbye